So today I thought I would explain my um, my development environment to you. So this is uh, what I use every day. What you see in my screencast is what I really work with. Um, of course, I use a higher resolution. I'm on a, a Retina MacBook Pro, so my resolution is a little tiny to be in screencast. So I usually bump things up, um, but that's the only real difference that I I have every day. So um, you also notice that I like you know, show the time and things like that, like my username, and I'll hide those for screen gaps because that's a little uh, distracting. So um, this is my real environment uh, that I use every day. Uh, screen is just a little lower than uh, normal. So I have all the tools that I use and stuff like that. So uh, number one, I use this the most is Alfred. I have it mapped to command space. It's very similar to, um, or I have it mapped to option space and command space spotlight search and you want to launch Chrome you just type Chrome and it helps you do that. Um, Alfred does the same thing but I can configure Alfred to launch things for us. So at one month I uh, look users up by their email address all the time so I can say user chris at GoRails.com, and if I hit enter, it will launch Chrome and search for that user in our uh, admin area. So this is really cool, and I can customize that and uh, make myself a bunch of little shortcuts like this to look up people um, very quickly or whatever I want to do. So Alfred is my probably number one tool. I love that the most. There's versions of that uh, idea on Windows and Linux. Um, but I just happen to use a Mac, so Alfred is the tool I use for that. Now, the second thing I probably use the most is the terminal. Um, I use iTerm2. Uh, it's pretty great. Um, would recommend that. It's a little bit, uh, a lot more customizable than the built-in terminal on uh, OS X. You can get similar kinds of things for Windows and Linux. Um, and then comes the prompt. So normally you're on bash and bash is what ships by default but I'm using a thing called zsh which you can see up here and it basically is this uh, different uh, prompt that that interprets your commands a little differently so you can you can have things like auto completing file names that work a little bit better than uh, bash would do so that's useful um, because when you're auto completing something like if you're saying, let's see, I don't know if there's any of these, maybe gem file. Um, yeah, you, you type GE and hit tab and you get all of these matches from all over the system and it allows you to continue typing. So bash would just kind of like not tab complete or something like that and it would be um, a little more frustrating. So ZSH gives you a lot of those helpful uh, bits around it. Now I recommend uh, if you use ZSH or want to check it out, grab oh my ZSH and uh, take a look at their website, install this. Uh, they have tons of themes um, and tons and tons and tons of helpful plugins to get your Git branches in there, um, whether or not you have staged files, things like that uh, are wonderful and it makes it very, very easy to add this. And you could do all these in Bash, but they're not going to be as easy. So I recommend that, it's uh, pretty fantastic. And with CSH, I have customized my prompt uh, completely on my own. I didn't use any of the themes that that ships with. I wanted a two line prompt so I could see all my stuff and have a lot of things in here. Um, and I just kinda liked it reading as uh, an English sentence effectively. So this is my username at the computer name using Ruby 2.2.2 in this directory on the git branch of master. And uh, there's a bunch of cool stuff that's kind of subtle and you may have noticed this and maybe you didn't. So if I type gs and the command was not found so it failed, uh, my name turns red because the command failed. And if I type ls, um, the command worked and my name is green. So that's a useful thing if you have long running commands and you want to see if the output of it uh, succeeded or failed. Um, it might appear to work because you were looking at the debugging output or something um, and this is really useful for that. So uh, the other thing that's cool is that if we were to um, edit a file, let's edit the gem file here, 
and let's add a new space and save that. When I get a new prompt, it's going to show this exclamation mark here. And that is basically just showing that when you do a git status, um, there is modified files. And if we check out this file back to where it was, and then now we don't have the exclamation mark in the prompt. So that's just really useful for me to keep an eye on, you know, did I half finish things last time I was here? Uh, do I need to review that? Do a commit on it? Do I need to put it in a branch or something or stash it? It helps me just gut check myself and say, oh, yeah, like you were working on something before uh, when you left. So that's really helpful. Um, I will say that my config and theme for this is in my github.files project. So if you come here and you go to the ZSH directory, you can see my ZSH config and I'm usually fiddling with this. I actually have it load both RVM and RBENV. So if uh, by chance RVM happens to be installed, it will load that but it will also try to load RBM. So I would recommend don't install both of them because that might be bad. Uh, but this will, um, this should automatically allow you to uh, have both of those loaded. So my theme here is uh, my prompt. Um, this is still, all of this is always a work in progress. I've like tried out getting your battery charge in there. Um, which is kind of neat. I've also played with, uh, and I can't remember the rules, but this plus or minus um, as the prompt instead of the normal like dollar sign is uh, customizable too, and I remember having it um, for some things. Oh, so there's the, uh, if you're using like um, Mercurial, I believe, uh, is the HG command. It shows a different character, and uh, um, if you're not in a Git branch, or if you're not in a git directory, so if we go up, uh, there's a circle. Um, and that's something that I totally forgot is there, but the plus or minus just tells me if I'm in git. Uh, circle tells me if I'm not in git. And uh, that's just a useful thing to keep an eye on. So you can do lots of cool little subtle things like that. And I uh, recommend checking that out and all the other themes because they're uh, pretty amazing. Um, I also have in here a bash profile. This is the same as like a bash RC. You can just rename that file. Uh, this is my old config from bash. I don't really remember what all it does uh, aside from create a few uh, like BE shortcuts and cap shortcuts and so on. Um, but that's worth checking out. And then uh, I believe my color scheme here is uh, in here as well. So. If you use iTerm and you want to use these colors, uh, which I took from Monokai, it's a theme that I think I first learned of in uh, in Vim, but Monokai is loved by a lot of people. It's very vibrant colors, and uh, I can glance at things uh, quickly. So I use this theme in general all over the place. So I use it in Terminal and Vim and... Um, plenty of other places. So anywhere I can kind of use Monica and keep it consistent. I'll do that So if you want to see the colors that we use they're all in here uh, or if you want to download this file and import it into your um, Into your color scheme. I believe you go to profiles colors and you load presets uh, And it will just show up as profile there um, These are all the colors that it will be using so that is that, that is iTerm and ZSH, and uh, of course the one that people ask a lot about is MacVim. So MacVim is my personal favorite editor right now. I wanted to learn Vim a long time ago, um, and I did, and I struggled with it. I was using uh, Linux for a long time, using Ubuntu, and uh, I was using gedit on there, uh, which is similar to Sublime or TextMate, and it was doing, you know, plenty good. I was plenty fast at it, but I wanted to get faster. I saw that, like, you know, all the really, really good developers seemed to use Vim or Emacs, and I was like, there must be something to that. Why are they using that um, and not using, you know, gedit or something? So 
I, uh, I set out to kind of like commit to using it and um, it's hard and it's time consuming. So don't, uh, don't feel bad if you haven't been able to commit to Vim, but I will say that um, what I think is the best way that I learned was to, uh, to open up your file in Vim and then just learn how to do all the things that you're trying to do when you need them. So if I'm trying to delete this uh, installation section, when I would learn Vim, I would just say, okay, like I'm in Vim now, I'm in um, the whatever mode this is called, the like navigation mode or edit mode or something. Um, when I'm here, I want to be able to grab this installation section. So how do I highlight this and then delete it? So I would teach myself all these things. So at first I'd learn how to navigate with H, J, K, and L. And then I would learn that Shift V puts you in a visual line mode. And then J can help me go down and select these. And then hitting D would delete it. And then I have an extra line here. So I'd learn, how do I delete one line? D, D does that. Okay. And I'd kind of learn these when I needed them. And they would actually stick by me doing it that way. Uh, I didn't really find any other um, any other ways of learning Vim to be that useful. Like, you know, people like to make games in the browser that use Vim commands and try and teach you that. But because it wasn't a real experience in my real editor and I wasn't trying to do real work, I just, it didn't stick with me. So um, this is how I ended up learning it. And uh, I, you know, became proficient at it. So I was probably as fast as I was in gedit after about one or two weeks, which is pretty quick. So I was slower for a while, um, but I learned all the things that I needed. And then I could uh, do most of my work in Vim without having to use the mouse and saving mouse time of expanding folders. And this is one of the things I think is the, uh, the my insight here is like, if you're in Vim and you're watching, you use Vim all the time and you're watching other developers who don't, you're going to see them stop and they're going to expand these folders and they're going to search for files manually here. And it's just kind of like painful to watch. Um, that is what I wanted to avoid. And I wanted to be the guy that's quick and can just open up a file and just really quick jump into wherever and uh, I wanted to be that guy because I saw the developers like Gary Bernhardt super fast in Vim. And uh, and that's why I learned it. And I was like, man, this is cool. So uh, the way that you can do that uh, to get started is great. But you're probably going to want some of these niceties like Command T. Uh, or I believe it's Control P on Windows or Linux. Um, this will open up a file name browser thing at the bottom and you can type one character and say uh, R and that will be limiting all of these to files that match with the letter R in it and RE will bring me the readme and I can hit enter and jump to it really quickly. You can do this in uh, Sublime and I think Sublime's at the point now where you could do all of this stuff in Sublime but um, yeah, I just find that like you have tendencies to use the mouse more and stuff in, in a uh, visual editor like that, whereas Vim will enforce you to use the keyboard as much as possible. And in Mac Vim, you can use the, the mouse to click on things if you need to or kind of just want to uh, do that. But you can also go in here and do it with the keyboard. So if I put my mouse over here, I can do Control W to switch these windows and I can jump back and forth. And then when I'm in this file browser, I can just hit enter and uh, open these folders as necessary and jump right back. So either way, um, I think Vim is just useful for that. So I'd encourage you to check it out and uh, start without any plugins and just use the basic Vim because I think that's the best way to learn it. But if you uh, want to, check out Janus, which is the... Uh, config that I use uh, generally. I customized it a little bit, um, but in general, Janus is a bunch of plugins and uh, a system to help you config, uh, help you write configs for Vim. So uh, check this out. They have all these 
uh, themes and stuff that come with it, but they also have uh, links to very good tutorials and then uh, explanation of how to get into your modes. So you can get into insert mode, normal mode, visual mode. Um, they, they have all the commands for that. They have some other things here, um, like your leader keys or a whole other thing to learn. But they also have all these basic customizations. So these are things that you're looking at right here just for Vim itself by default. So these are all regular Vim uh, things. Now down here, this control P plugin is the file uh, matcher here at the bottom and it ships with a ton of these and I, I don't use half of them but it is very useful to have because you can see your trailing white space for example. Um, when I save my files if I add an extra space here or here or something like that you can see that they show up as red where it's like hey you don't want trailing white space if I hit save, um, it, as part of the save process, I overwrote it so that it will remove those white space uh, at the bottom, and it should also retab things. So if for some reason you accidentally had real tabs, it should automatically convert those to two spaces instead, which is pretty nifty. So you can do a lot with Vim, especially if you get into scripting, but you definitely don't need any of that stuff. And Janus basically gives you all of these things that you would uh, you would have as niceties in Sublime. So uh, switching to Vim from Sublime, I definitely recommend Janus. It's uh, it's super duper easy to get started with. And uh, I also have a Vim folder in here. So uh, GVim is the the visual Vim. So it's this one. Uh, and regular Vim. Uh, .vimrc files will apply to all vim, so including if you type vim. Dot in the terminal, this will just open it up in the terminal instead. <clears throat> so I have these, uh, I believe gvimrc after is the one to take a look at. And my fonts, uh, line colors, so the status bar changes color, so right now it's purple, uh, like it just changes colors and stuff like you can keep track of that and it's just useful so um, take a look at this too if you're interested and that is pretty much my setup I don't use a whole lot of other things I use Dropbox um, this is Alfred um, I use ScreenFlow for recording and it's awesome on the Mac uh, highly recommend that if you want to get into screencasts and uh, cloud app is one of my favorite things so setting up a YouTube channel and I can just make screenshots and they'll be automatically uploaded to uh, the browser. So this is loading really, really slowly, but for example, if I want to take a screenshot here, I can just do Command Shift 4, hit space, and it will grab this window and it will automatically start uploading and then copy it to the clipboard and that's it and you have your screenshot uploaded and you can paste it to uh, coworkers or whatever. So I really love that about Cloud App. And there's similar um, applications like Dropler and Windows and Linux ones and stuff like that too. So that's my current setup. It's always changing, but I try and keep it lightweight and not change it too much at this point. Um, but I'm always fiddling because there's always cool uh, new stuff out there. So... Um, that is all I've got, but I would like you to post any things that you use and why you like them uh, in the comments below because I'd love to see that. And maybe, uh, maybe it'll be something that I'm like, oh, wow, that's really cool. I had never seen that or never given it uh, a chance before and add that to my repertoire. So, uh, yeah, hope this helped and uh, be sure to post links in the comments.